So, you want to be rich? Do you want to have so much crowns you can buy all the hash knights in the world and equip them with those shiny fame armors? You have come to the right place my friends. Hi, my name is Feed and in this video I will tell you all you need to know about making money in Battle Brothers. So money aka gold aka crowns is used in everything in this game. From hiring and paying brothers to tavern, training hall, taxidermist and of course buying food, supplies and equipment. Literally everything you do requires money. It's the lifeblood of your company and there are two main ways to make it. First one is to do contracts. The amount of crown you get paid by doing contracts depends on your renown. The length of the campaign, the type of the contract and the difficulty of the contract. In the first 10 days or so, contracts only pay about 3 to 500 crowns. You will use this money to buy new brothers, food and tools to keep your team going. If you have some extra gold, you should invest in some trade goods that you can quickly make a small profit with. In the next 10 days, contracts start to pay a little bit more, about 5 to 700. You should now have a small bank of a few thousand crowns that you can spend on the banner or some mid-tier recruits such as 500 gold militia, 800 gold squire or 1k gold hunters. After this, contracts will start to pay better and you should have access to the noble house contracts that will pay 1000 crowns or more. Contracts will become a steady source of income for your team. Try to do them smartly, most of them are worth the risk but some of them are not worth the time. The amount of money you get for selling depends on each individual town the situation in the town and your relations with the town. Usually, the price in trade towns and big citadel are high which means they buy your items for more but they also sell you things for more. Price in small towns are low so they sell you stuff for cheap but they also don't pay much for your loot. If a town has ambush trade routes or burn down warehouse, the price will go off the roof and you want to sell everything here. If a town has well supplied or high spirit, they will sell you things for a cheaper price. If a town has terrified villagers or disappearing villagers or other bad events, the price will be terrible. Make sure you do the contracts that take care of the situations before conducting any trade. A good way to know if the price is good or bad is to have a price indicator in your inventory. The best ones are things that are worth exactly 100 gold. 200 gold or 1000 gold. For example, a wooden shield is worth exactly 100 gold, but the market only buys it for 15 gold. That means the town is buying your items for 15% of the amount that they are worth. A kite shield is worth 200 gold, and the town buys it for 35. That means the town is buying for 17.5%, which is quite good. The price here is applied to most of the loot in your inventory, like armors and weapons, but not trade goods and treasures such as gold coin and silver wares. These can be sold for full price usually. Some items have different price than others, but you don't have to bother with that. All you need to do is to sell when the price is high and maybe don't sell when the price is low. If you play on expert economy, which I recommend, 18 to 20 is a good price. 16 to 17 is okay price and anything below 14, try not to sell if possible. Another important thing is, repaired items sell for more than damaged items. And the ratio between durability and the value is proportional. For example, a 50% repaired sword is worth half the amount of a fully repaired sword. In order to get the most money out of your loot, you should always fully repair them. Beware, some items aren't worth repairing because the gold you gain from repairing is not worth the gold you spend on buying the tools. So how to know what is worth repairing and what isn't? A good rule of thumb is tier 1 weapons are bad, tier 2 and 3 are good, shields and helmets are terrible, armor are also bad except for some high end armors. After playing for a while, you will get a sense of which items are worth but let me give you a small little tip. If you take the value of an item, divide it by the durability and the result is 7 or higher, you can make profit from repairing it. 
At 7, you can make a small profit. At 10 or higher, you will make a big profit. This is the best way to make money in this game. A fully repaired brick and flail can be sold for more than 250. An orc cleaver is 200. A noble sword is at least 500 crowns. Selling an entire inventory at a trade town with good price will net you 10 to 20k crowns easily. Of course, this whole make broken weapons look new and sell them at full price scheme requires one thing. Just like Walter White can't cook meth without methylamine, you can't repair loot without tools. So make sure you always have enough tools to repair your own equipment and your loot. Some people ask me if going to the wilderness is a good way to make money. Now, there's a lot of riches to be had out there in the wild, but it's not like you can't make a good bit of money around the towns either. Loots from brigands, treasure from undead, and more importantly, contracts are more than enough to make you rich. I'm not saying that you shouldn't go explore. I'm saying that money shouldn't be the main reason you head out to the wilderness. If you have the orc or the goblin ambitions, or you have a patrol the road quest and you have cleaned out the areas near the town, you can do a quick trip out there. I generally stick to the towns until I have a solid core team before I go exploring. So now that you have learned how to make money, let's talk about how to spend it. A simple rule here is not to buy anything that you can loot from enemies. I have to admit I am guilty of following these rules too strictly. If you watch my stream often, at Twitch TV slash feeding friendly by the way, you will understand. You can find most of the equipment you need from brigands, but there are a few things that are quite hard to find, so you might want to spend your crowns on these following things. On day 1, buy your naked dudes a few pieces of equipment. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. 50 gold for a shield that gives you 15 defense, great. 20 gold for a knife that you can use to puncture enemies and get free armors? Amazing! Don't overspend early on though. As long as most of my brothers have a weapon and some sort of clothing on their body going into the first battle, I'm happy. Sometimes, the market sells some damaged noble house gear for cheap. Keep an eye out for them. 7 to 800 gold for an early game build hook is a game changer. Always check weaponsmiths for a whip. They are pretty cheap, about 600-700 gold. You just need one and it will enable you to fight guys and orcs early on. If you want to do the icy cave early, you can get yourself a 200 maze for about 2.5k gold. Once your archer gets to level 8 or 9 and start to hit things more frequently, you can consider picking up some warbows for them. I don't buy high-end armors and weapons early. Why? Because I either don't need them at the moment, or I can get them for free somewhere else or later on. We'll talk about this in the next video. Other than these, most of my money go towards buying brothers and famed items. I like to go from some cheap brothers, like brawlers and farmhands for the first few days, into some efficient mid-tier brothers like militias and hunter after that to form the core team, and then go straight to Hedge Knights. Hedge Knights and Fame items cost a ton, so I usually run around with 10 to 20k gold to make sure I can buy them whenever I see them. Try not to sit on more than 30k gold for too long, because if you are too rich, your brothers will ask for a pay raise, and if you accept, you have to pay them more, if you decline, they become greedy. It's a lose-lose situation. A few more minor things. Don't overuse taverns, trading halls, temples. They are not very cost effective. If you want to fire a brother, especially one who has been with you for a long time, don't pay him compensation. Strip him naked, kill him off. Sometimes it's worth to take a bribe from the enemy and fill the contract if the money is good enough. And I think that's about it for this video. Overall, buy low, sell high, don't spend money on unnecessary things. Got it? Good. Thanks for watching, and have fun being rich.